Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn about the physical properties of carboxylic acid, which is acidity. So let's look here. Acidity is actually we have learned previously in chapter fifteen point five phenol for acidity. So right now, let's look for case of carboxylic acid. Blah, not compare acidity there. So just a uh, uh, refresher. Acidity is the ability of a compound to donate ataupun release a proton. Okay, and then we know once it donate ataupun release a proton, we're going to form conjugate base. And acidity is determined by the stability of your conjugate base of your acid. And then, the higher the stability of your conjugate base, the higher the acidity. Okay, so first thing first, what we're going to look at is actually resonance effect. Tapi dalam kes ni nanti kita akan tengok juga inductive effect. So, let's look here. Carboxylic acid dissociate to form carboxylic ion. So, I'm just going to write down the equation of the dissociation. So, akan jadi CH3COO minus. Okay, plus dengan H plus. So, this is what we call our carboxylate ion. Okay. So, for the case um, here, resonance ni, what we're talking about is actually the negative charge ni is delocalized atau is being distributed between the two oxygen atom. Okay, so kalau case yang phenol adalah negative tu dalam carbon kan in your benzene ring. Tapi kalau carboxylic acid is being distributed between these two oxygen. And this actually causes the carboxylic ion to be more stable. So that's it for your resonance effect. So lepas ni kita akan tengok banyak actually inductive effect where effect of substituent. Okay, so we have we're gonna learn two things. So electron donating group, yang ini selalu nampakkan R, which is your alkyl group. Electron withdrawing group is actually your electronegative atom, ataupun specifically your halogen atom, F, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So now let's look for electron donating group. So bila dia donate elektr uh, electron, so what would happen? This sebenarnya akan increase the electron density. So here that can increase the electron density on oxygen atom bearing the negative charge. So the carboxylate ion is destabilized and what happen is that so maknanya H plus tu is harder to release lah sebab dia dah tak stabil kan dia kalau boleh nak dengan OH je dia tak nak jadi O minus kat situ. So what happen is that susah nak donate so maka acidity dia will decrease. Sebab again, acidity adalah untuk donate a proton kan. Ni kalau dia susah, maksud dia acidity dia tu um, is weak lah. Acidity dia is less. Ataupun there are two ways of looking at it. Yang in terms of this one, ataupun in terms of yang OH bond. Which is much more easier lah kalau kita tengok yang ini. So, contohnya kita ada carboxylic acid dekat sini dengan alkyl group. So, what happen? Dia akan increase the electron density of OH bond. Okay, and then this bond will become stronger and susah kita nak dissociate H plus ni ataupun nak donate H plus. So, since it is a stronger bond ataupun OH bond become stronger, so it is harder to donate H plus. Again, acidity, kita akan tengok pada ability to donate H plus, maka acidity dia decrease. Okay, so that's for the case of electron donating group. How about electron withdrawing group? So, bila dia withdraw electron, maknanya dia akan attract electron towards it. So, sebab tu lah kamu tengok, semua ni adalah group 17 yang electron negativity dia is high. So, for electron withdrawing group, so dia terbalik sikit daripada kita punya E, E, D, G, dia akan decrease the electron density on oxygen atom. So, what happen is that the carboxylic ion tu is stabilized. So, bila dia stabil, so senang lah H plus ni nak release. So, H plus is easier to release. Hence, the acidity increase. Again, acidity adalah ability to donate ataupun release a proton. Okay, itu adalah in terms of stability of O minus. Sekarang ni kita nak tengok in terms of OH bond kita. So, contohnya, X ni is your halogen lah, group 17. So, halogen ni akan attract semua electron towards it. So, what happen is that it will decrease the electron density of your OH bond. So, what happen? Your OH bond tu akan become weaker. So, sebenarnya it is easier to donate kita punya H plus ataupun ha, donate ataupun release kita punya H plus. So, the acidity kita akan increase. Okay. So, just to summarize for you, kalau EDG, what will happen adalah acidity akan decrease. Kalau EWG, electron withdrawing group, acidity dia akan increase. Where previously, we have talked about acidity in terms of conjugate base, uh, the stability of conjugate base. 
Sekarang ni kita nak tengok in terms of EDG dengan EWG ataupun the uh, strength of your OH bond. Easy ataupun harder to release your H plus. So ini lagi senang nak tengok lah. So now looks, uh, let's look on page 5. Yang ini kita akan tengok. Uh, first one kita akan tengok effect of EWG. So the difference between these two adalahnya adalah there's one of it ada chlorine. So the presence of chlorine atom which is an EWG. So since it withdraw the electron, dia akan decrease the electron density of OH bond. So bila dia dah decrease the electron density of your OH bond, OH bond becomes weaker and it is easier to release. Maknanya tu chloroethanol acid ni lagi senang lah nak release hydrogen. Okay, so, 2 chloroethanoic acid is more acidic. So, that's for effect kalau ada EWG ke tidak. Second is number of electron withdrawing group. So, 2 to dichloro dengan 2 chloro ni, kita tengok 2 to dichloro have 2, 2 chloro ada only 1. So, 2 to dichloro ni has 2 chlorine atom, while 2 chloropropanoic acid has only 1 chlorine atom. So, bila dia ada 2, so maknanya dia akan withdraw lagi banyak elektron. So, maknanya... When it withdraw lagi banyak elektron, the OH bond in our yang 2-2-dichloro ni, dichloropropanoic acid, propanoic acid, acid, okay, padam acid tu, is weaker and H plus is easily released. So, bila dia easily release, so maknanya 2-2-dichloropropanoic acid is more acidic when we compare between these two. So, kalau ada dua, dia lagi more acidic than only one Electron withdrawing group. Next is the position. So, kita tengok 2 chloro dengan 4 chloro ni. 2 chloro ni dekat dengan C double bond OOH. Chlorine yang number 4 ni jauh sana. So, kita akan tulis. Chlorine atom is nearer to carboxyl group in 2 chloro butanoic acid. Tu lagi dekat than in 4 chloro butanoic acid. So, bila dia lagi dekat, it is easier lah. Ataupun untuk tarik. Uh, untuk decreasekan the electron density of OH uh, bond bandingkan dengan yang 4 chlorobutanoic acid here. So the OH bond is weaker dalam 2 chlorobutanoic acid and easily release hence my 2 chlorobutanoic acid is more acidic. Okay, so we have look for the case if we have EWG, if we have one or two, ataupun different position. Now we're, we're going to look at different electron withdrawing group. So electron withdrawing group is actually from our group 17 kan? Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So we know this is actually all the atom down the group, gr down the group 17. Okay, the, so bila dia down the group, the electronegativity decrease. Ability to attract electron to decrease. So kita tengok dekat sini, both ni, the difference is actually the EWG. So what happened here is that we're going to compare the electronegativity between these two atom. So down the group electronegativity decrease. So it means that fluorine too is the most electronegative lah. Fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine. So fluorine will withdraw more electron than your chlorine. So the OH bond is weaker lah kalau we have hydro, uh, fluorine attached to carboxylic acid. H plus is easily released. Hence the two fluoro uh, butanoic acid is more acidic than your 2 chloro butanoic acid. So that is actually the the end of the comparison of between all the carboxylic acid. Nah, yang ini lagi senang sikit lah actually. So what we're going to look at EWG, the number, the position and the different electron withdrawing group. Okay. So now what we're going to look at is the acidity of carboxylic acid, phenol and alcohol. Okay, previously we have learned only about the phenol dengan alcohol je. Ha, ada jugalah water kan sebenarnya. So, here we have learned here. Tapi sekarang ni, what we're going to add semua is we're going to add our carboxylic acid. So, maknanya dalam kes ni, carboxylic acid is the most acidic lah. Kau banding dengan phenol. Okay, why? Okay, so first what I'm going to do, I'm going to write down the equation of dissociation of each. Ni adalah for your carboxylic acid, dissociation ataupun nak kata dah release H+. For the case of phenol dengan alcohol, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste from uh, the notes dekat chapter 15 lah. But what you're going to do atau what you're going to write down adalah for this equation of phenol dengan alcohol, you have to show the dissociation ataupun um, what happened when it already releases the hydrogen attached to it lah. Attached to our OH. So here I'm just going to, so I'm just going to label it 1, 2, 3. Okay, so... 
Ha, kamu tahu lah, 1, 2 is your carboxylic acid, 2 is your phenol, 3 is your alcohol. So, now we're going to compare between these three. Okay, which is the stability of your conjugate base. Okay, so dalam case of carboxylate ion ni, kita akan tengok the negative charge in carboxylate ion are delocalized between the two, between two oxygen atom. So, which increase the stability of carboxylate ion. So, the bila, between the oxygen itself, when it's equally distributed, lagi stabil. Kalau case phenol ataupun phenoxide ion tu, the negative charge is being delocalized into carbon ataupun into your benzene ring. So, that's why they, they, uh, that is less stable berbanding dengan carboxylate ion. And last but not least is your ethoxide ion tu. The presence of alkyl group, which is electron donating group, akan increase the density uh, of negative charge and this will increase the decrease the stability of your alkoxide ion dalam case ni adalah ethoxide ion so that's the last of it so later on I'm going to give you example and you should try it yourself